I don't know about you guys, but in the spirit of dead internet theory, I am finding the current phase that we're in as a culture. It's becoming more and more uncanny and unhinged, and it feels like the mental health of the average person is so poised on this knife's edge, it's like they are two shakes away from a full-blown MK Ultra meltdown. Even on the internet, you really can't be sure if you're talking to someone in good faith, or if they're a bot, or if they're a shill, or even a fed. I mean, you're seeing CIA-style consensus cracking happening in almost every online community, to the point where can you even be sure if a lot of these social movements are organic? Can you be sure that the search results you're getting on Google are not curated for the express purpose of influencing your decision making? This is the new paradigm. It's this sterilized, astroturfed, bot ridden, boiled, lifeless imitation of what was once a society where free speech was a th actually a thing where people were exchanging ideas, if not through debate, then just through memes, you know? And the idea that there is still this left-right dichotomy, this pendulum by which the political direction of society is balanced, somehow we're beyond that now, and it's confusing. I mean, I think a lot of people are finding themselves just rudderless, you know, directionless. We exist in this mouse utopia, this gray world where as I mentioned in one of my other videos, I mean, you know, the clowns have turned into demons. Clown world is behind us because memes aren't funny anymore. Comedians aren't funny. The lines between propaganda and entertainment are blurred in this kind of twisted Bernaysian fashion. Video games are just another tool of cultural engineering, just like the film industry is now and music. There really is no political discussion to be had. There's just a woke jackboot pressing down on your face eternally. And not only has this been completely normalized, you better smile and you better celebrate Pride Month and pretend that the six foot two stubbled man in a dress with a baton kind of waving in your face and saying, celebrate me. I mean, you better smile and you better celebrate and pretend that everything's fine. Lest you be on the receiving end of justice, quote unquote, state-sponsored violence so that you may learn tolerance. And that is kind of what's going on here. When even Fox News is flying the pride flag and has pride graphics on, you know, and there's just no escaping it. I mean, the idea that conservative politicians even exist, they are a joke, beyond a joke. I mean, in 2022, I am a fan of a lot of right-wing philosophy, paleoconservatism and stuff like this, but there's no point in even identifying with the right. There is no right. And the only definition that exists of the right, at least anymore, is the mainstream woke definition, which may as well be synonymous with fucking troglodyte. You know, it's the worst possible interpretation of what really are just common sense values. The bread and circuses have ceased, you know, the red team versus blue team boomer tier reality TV political struggle, which never seems to ever go anywhere except down this path of postmodernization. I mean, that's kind of over. We are under a tyrannical system now, whether you even noticed or not, maybe you don't give a shit, but we are really living through a phase where these basic principles, you know, which a lot of the time it's just evident that a man is a man, a woman is a woman. People should have the right to take care of their family the right to value and defend your children's innocence and protect them from degeneracy. Owning things in the Western free market is fine and it, capitulation to people freaking out about being victims is not an obligation. You don't even have to do that. You can tell them to go fuck themselves, you know? Where this is enough to, to have you lumped in with the most extreme political figures, both alive and historical, right? You know, where it's ridiculous and it's truly an example of gaslighting, right? It's the midwits and it's the redditors and the women of this society. They are the ones that have created the conditions for this post-clown world. They're dumb enough to think that they're smart, I guess, right? It's midwit theory, you know? I mean, like Baz down the pub with 100 IQ and the Giga Brain Spurg, I mean, they're in agreement. They kind of agree in the empirical obviousness of common sense and truth, right? Whereas the midwits 
are lost in a labyrinth created for them by twisted psychopathic academics and subversive intellectuals, let's just put it that way. They're the perfect prey for the psychopath, international, global, you know, cultural engineers, right, who have been working on a project to change the temperature of society across the West for, I'd say, a hundred years minimum, maybe more, maybe double. Divine light severed by a lifetime of atheist indoctrination. I mean, what is there to protect the average normgroid from being completely brainwashed? It's over. The war is over. Anyone still fighting now is like the last remnants of resistance. The stormtroopers of the woke corporate globo homo status quo are hunting the streets and they're looking for the last dissident splinter cells of edgelord millennials. Like, where are they? We have enough power now, we can just go mask off. Execute Order 66, let's take them out, right? But, you know, even with all that said, their victory is not total. It's, it's almost a Pyrrhic victory. And you can see this when you look into the eyes of the shit-lib Karen in HR, right? She has never been more power-crazed and yet uneasy, right? It's this strange cognitive dissonance. And, you, you know, after the lockdowns and the censorship and the terror and the tyranny inflicted on the average member of society, the average citizen, this woke endgame that we exist in, it's a nervous endgame, isn't it? Because just under the surface, bubbling away, under those rainbow flags and glitter and dancing drag children and smiling Afro-trans lesbians, there exists a real, genuine, palpable rage just simmering away, unable to be expressed, unable to even be defined or acknowledged but nonetheless exists all the same. In terms of online culture, at least, if it was up to me, things would go back to just a free-for-all of shitposting, where nobody is a victim because you can just stand up, turn around, and walk away from the fucking screen. It's really easy. But if you want to be on the internet, you're going to have to grow a pair of balls and realize that if someone calls you the N-word or gay or a retard, that that really isn't the equivalent of actual violence. That's just life, you know? And uh, as a gamer, you know, in the political sense, I'm not gonna let anyone infringe on my right to call you a gay retard while I teabag you in Halo 3. I mean, this really is the essence of free speech. And really it's this anti-fragility that we should be perpetuating throughout society because that is the only way we can get back to when things were functioning. And then you have these giant corporations like BlackRock, which again are making it impossible for culture to actually organically rebound. And these arch manipulators like Larry Fink of BlackRock, they're achieving this via these ESG mandates, which really is just kind of Soviet style market control, right? I mean, every major company now has a diversity officer and they are commissars of this international woke regime. The pendulum has been jammed, and it's stuck in this obnoxious, self-defeating, leftist configuration which will utterly decimate everything. I mean, literally, we will enter some kind of new dystopian dark age unless the health of the video game industry is restored, and by proxy, the West. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's how Gamergate's going, if you're wondering. I mean, that's just a quick update. And, you know, it's really funny, right, because, I mean... Take Matt Walsh's new documentary, right? That The Daily Wire contributor. I mean, he just made this documentary about gender ideology. It's called What is a Woman? I haven't seen it yet, but it's been making the rounds, you know, on Twitter and stuff. And it's been generating a lot of butthurt within the trans community. Shocking, I know, right? But, you know, the fact is their dogma, their religion, this snake eating its own tail, it's like an Ouroboros of retardation. The ideology can't answer these basic questions because they're not in debate mode. They haven't been in debate mode for years. They are in mask off Bolshevik Marxist battle mode. And really, I mean, these leftists were only ever in debate mode to use pill pull, which is just a completely dishonest method of discussion. There is no good faith. There is no respect for empirical truth. It is simply a linguistic power game. I mean, this is the woke definition of debate. 
Which is very disappointing. I mean, a few years ago, there seemed to be a resurgence of actual online kind of neo-reactionary conservatism before Richard Spencer popped up and glowed the alt-right into existence and then tanked any level-headed dialogue pertaining to this new resurgence of conservative counterculture. Suddenly, the alt-right exists, and it's like, well, what, is, what does that definition even mean? Alternative right. Well, that could have been an absolutely positive movement, but instead, suddenly, it's connected with, like, literal LARPing Nazis and Charlottesville, and the media is going in and making sure the optics are scary. And Richard Spencer's goose-stepping around, you know, popping those Roman salutes, going, Heil Trump, you know? Like, okay, talk about agent provocateur. Talk about poisoning the well. And even Gamergate is, like, retroactively connected to this boogeyman of the alt-right, which is a completely media-created pigeonhole by which anyone critical of the status quo will simply be dumped into this landfill, right? Where all is tainted, all discussion is ceased because, hey, I can't talk to you because you are associated with the worst of the worst, even if it's just in my imagination. Whatever I imagine to be the worst possible political actor, you're associated with it because you want video games to not be shit. No, now we're back to the usual boomer duality of absolute pause versus the red brand of milder pause, but we're still going to advocate for open borders and pay lip service to accusations of racism and, you know, even the, the Dems are the real racists, am I right? Eh, blah, blah, blah. We're going to operate within the frame of our enemies who simply want to destroy us. This strategy has not changed in the last 50 years. This is the definition of cuckservitism, isn't it? It's that you're kind of paid to lose, really. You're just throwing the fight. And now, after the last couple of years, post-corona, I mean, can I even say that yet, YouTube? Are you going to put me on a list? But yes, you know, post-coof, we have been spat out into a new order. There's a new landscape. Biden is president. He isn't even a real person. No one even voted for him, but he's president, right? And... The streets are kind of empty and everything's very quiet and mass society, as in a society existing where culture exists and people can come together and watch movies and discuss things and events happen and people kind of relate to each other based on this shared experience. It's dead. And there's nothing that's come in to replace it except corporate pride month, right? And everyone's looking around going, it's a, a whole month. I feel like one of those peasants from the movie Stargate who are forced to worship the alien Egyptian god, you know? He arrives in his giant pyramid and lands down. In our case, it's a giant rainbow pyramid that lands, a giant eye in the middle, eye of Sauron, right? And as the peasants, we must pay tribute or be crushed by the might of this monolith. It's a cultural monolith. There are no two sides. There are no subcultures by which disenfranchised youths can identify. I mean, we live in a time where Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols just came out recently, and he goes, this woke shit is lame. He is going, I've lived long enough to see the left, who used to be let edgy counterculture, become a sterile, insincere, illiberal tool of oligarchs and elites. That is insane. I mean, it's insane, but again, nothing is as it seems in post-clown world. As I've mentioned before many times, this is Purim, right? The Jewish festival where the jester becomes king, the man becomes the woman, the mongoloid becomes the prophet, right? And it's just a chaotic orgy. It's a mouse utopia in collapse. The colony is imploding while the beautiful ones, these fat elite rats, sit on their ivory towers of Babel, encircling this disgusting cacophony of just blood and sex and violence, you know? And these fat rats sit there and they go, nothing will ever threaten us again. Not even the natural duality of the universe. We're going to erase it all. Everything will become one. Just one monoculture where no creativity, no ascension is possible. That, I guess, is their interpretation of utopia, right? Because I guess then we'll have peace. 
when there's nothing to differentiate anything from anything else, in like a post-Evangelian technological cultural singularity, where we're all just melted down into human ooze, ever malleable, just to be poured into these state-sanctioned containers of identity, be it non-binary or gender-fluid, gay, cis, other kin, dear kin, trans, just going to pour that human ooze in and that's who you are. Too liquid, too fluid to ever really pose a threat to the establishment. One culture, one voice, one race, right? And it's going to be woke and it's going to be gay and it's going to be pro-Ukraine, I guess. And uh, it's going to be fucking cringe. <laughs>